Today is the big day to think of how far flung we have come and how far we have to go. Along with multifarious struggles and triumphs, there is much more to thrive and much more to show. Let's rejoice the majestic journey. Esteemed participants, a warm, pleasant morning to one and all gathered here. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a cordial welcome for the inauguration of five-day national level faculty development program on heritage management, a business perspective, jointly hosted by the Department of Commerce, St. Joseph's College, Autonomous, Trichirapalli, Tamil Nadu, India, and the AICTE Training and Learning Atal Academy. We once again welcome you all to this great 177-year-old Special Heritage A++ institution. God helps those who help themselves. To worship is the door to God's presence. I request all the participants to invoke God's blessings with this prayer song. It's a glad welcome we bring to you this morning. An aesthetic administrator, a man of letters and action. Such an eminent personality is our head of the department, Dr. F. R. Alexander Praveen Durai. I call upon our beloved head of the department to welcome the gathering. Honorable Vice Chancellor of Bharidasan University, our beloved Dr. Selvam, Deputy Principal of St. Joseph's College, Dr. Alex Ramani, Father Vice Principal of St. Joseph's College, 
Reverend Father Arulanandam, Shepherd Director Reverend Father Berkmans, dear faculty of commerce and other departments of St. Joseph's College, and beloved participants from 21 states of India. Good morning, one and all. Today is a great day, a day of days. Only a few days are like that. And this day will be remembered by St. Joseph's College and many of us. For this is the first time we are organizing at Atal FDP. For this function, we have with us the great Vice Chancellor of Bharati Dasan University. Sir has got a very lengthy resume. And if I have to read, it will take several minutes. And of course, there is another person interested with that responsibility. When I was going through the resume of uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, one thing struck me, which I had not seen in any of the Vice Chancellors here before. That is, our present Vice Chancellor, Dr. Selvam, has cleared civil services main exam. And that shows the knowledge of our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Sir. And when it was offered to Vice Chancellor to do engineering, he has declined it. That shows the affection our Vice Chancellor has for arts and commerce. I very proudly say that this program is organized by Commerce Department and our Vice Chancellor belongs to Commerce Department. What a fitting beginning for this program. On behalf of 177 year old St. Joseph's College and also on behalf of all the organizers of this AICT sponsored online FDP, I very warmly welcome our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Selvam. Welcome, sir. Now, in absentia, I welcome Reverend Father Rector, Reverend Father Secretary, and Reverend Father Principal, who are all on an official mission. Here we have with us our Deputy Principal, Dr. Alex Ramani, a simple God-fearing man. On behalf of the organizers of this event, I very warmly welcome you, sir. And we have a very dynamic workaholic, Reverend Father Arulananda, the Vice Principal of St. Joseph's College and now the Acting Principal as Principal is away with an official walk to Calcutta. And uh, this simple down to earth unassuming person is with us to deliver the felicitation address on behalf of the organization, organizers, I welcome you Father. And of course, there are many participants who are going to make this program a successful one. And uh, we have here participants from 21 states and uh, union territories with the biggest representations from Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, and other many other Rajasthan and many other states. So you, you have trusted us and joined this program. And we will not let you down, my dear participants. On behalf of this heritage institution, St. Joseph's College has got special heritage status from University Grants Commission. And it is the one and the only uh, institution in the whole of Tamil Nadu to have this rare honor. And that is the reason why I've decided to ask for this FDP program on heritage management. Since this is organized by Commerce Department, we wanted to provide a business perspective. The whole program has been arranged in such a way 
that you are going to have different perspectives on heritage management. I very warmly welcome all the participants to this program. My warm welcome to everyone of you. And here uh, with me, uh, the organizers, uh, 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 Reverend Father Berkmans, FDP convener, and uh, Dr. Vinod Kumar, organizing secretary. Of, on their behalf, I welcome every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now we have the pleasure of listening to our respected deputy principal, Dr. V. Alex Ramani, a man of hard work and dedication. I consider it a great honor to welcome Dr. V. Alex Ramani to felicitate the gathering. Please, sir. The most honorable vice chancellor of the Bharati Dasan University, Dr. M. Selvam, the most revered administrative leaders of our college management, Reverend for the Rector, Reverend for the Secretary, and Reverend for the Principal, esteemed vice principal of our college, Reverend Dr. L. John Peter Arulanandam, SJ. Respected officials of our college administration, the vice principals, the deans, the heads of the departments and coordinators, revere convener of the CFDP and the head of the Department of Commerce, Dr. F. R. Alexander Praveen Durai. Respected coordinator of the CFDP and the director of the Shepherd Extension Department, Reverend Father M. Berkman's SJ. Revered secretary of the organizing committee, Dr. J. Vinod Kumar, and other members of his team, esteemed faculty members of the Department of Commerce and the faculty members of other institutions who are participating in this FDP. Honorable special invitees, guests, friends, and well wishes. All of you, a very pleasant good morning. It is indeed a great honor for me to offer you my felicitations on this historic event of the Department of Commerce of St. Joseph's College, a five-day national level faculty development program on heritage management, a business perspective. At the very outset, I submit my thanks and greetings to the Department of Commerce, ably headed by Dr. F. R. Alexander Praveen Durai. Also, I place on record my sincere thanks to AICTE that collaborates with us in this FDP. The Department of Commerce is ever keeping up its tradition and legacy. The Department of Commerce had its inception as early as 1948 and nearly 73 years passed. Great stalwarts like Professor Vellu, Professor Virabhavu, Professor Benis Fernando, Professor Victor Luis Antoine, and many others in the past contributed their might to take this department to greater heights. Along the lines of these stalwarts, the committed professors of the present times are doing yeoman service to the students and stakeholders and to the society at large. The Department of Commerce has the credit of having produced great personalities in the field of commerce. This FDP is a testimony to the commitment 
and the teamwork of the faculty members of the Department of Commerce and to the legacy that they keep up till date. We the Josephites feel proud of our 177 year long legacy of educational commitment of St. Joseph's College, the temple of tertiary learning. Our college has been given a unique honor of heritage status by the University Grants Commission. We are the one in the southern part of India to receive the single honor. Being the heritage institution, we have the moral commitment and social responsibility to propagate the message, heritage and heritage management. That is how this FDP has its theme focused on heritage management. The UNESCO underlines heritage management as the heritage is our legacy from the past, what we live today and what we pass on to the future. Our natural and cultural heritage are irreplaceable sources of life and inspiration. The heritage needs preservation, stewardship and promotion. The heritage faces possible threats in the form of human activity as tourism, group conflicts, and so on. Climate change, resource constraints. This FDP is going to throw light on this heritage management from the business perspective. Eminent scholars and academicians are going to enlighten us for these five days through their information filled and thought provoking talks. Our college principal, Reverend Dr. Arukisam Xavier SJ, as a resource person, is going to share his expertise with us on the topic institutional heritage on the fourth day. Like that, we have about 14 input sessions. This FDP is going to be a very enriching experience for all of us, I'm sure. We all will cherish the whole dynamics of the FTP. I wish you all the very best. I thank you all for listening to my felicitation address. Have purposeful days ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your excellent uh, felicitation. Now, I am extremely grateful to have with us our beloved Vice Principal, Reverend Dr. L. John Peter Arlanandam S.J., a seasoned scholar and navigator of this flagship of knowledge. I take immense pleasure to welcome our Reverend Father Vice Principal to felicitate the gathering. Please, Father. Dear participants, kindly mute your mic and video. Respected Dr. Yam Selvam, Honorable Vice Chancellor. Bardas University of Sitsi, Mr. Anamale Sendil Kumar, 
CEO and Vice President, Beacon Green Tech Limited, all the research persons, Dr. F. R. Alexander Previnturai, Head, Department of Commerce, Reverend Father M. Berkmans, the coordinator, and Dr. J. Vinod Kumar, the organizing secretary, the faculty members of the Department of Commerce, and all the participants. A pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. On behalf of Reverend Father Rector, Reverend Father Secretary, Reverend Father Principal, St. Joseph's College, Trichy, I extend a warm welcome to Dr. M. Selvam, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Bada's University, Trichy, and Mr. Anamalai Sendil Kumar, CEO and Vice President, Beacon Green Tech Limited, for having accepted to give the inaugural address and valedictory address, respectively. And I express my gratitude to all the resource persons of this program. Frank Matero, Professor of Architecture in his article on Heritage, Conservation and Archaeology states that heritage and conservation have become important themes in current discussions on place, cultural identity and the preservation of the past. Archaeological sites have long been a part of heritage and its display, certainly before the use of the term heritage and the formal study of tourism. However, current concerns with the escalating pace of site destruction can be attributed to the perception among the public and the professionals that archaeological sites like the natural environment are finite non renewable resources deteriorating at an increasing rate due to various reasons. Archaeological and or heritage sites are a symbol of history. They are representation of the past and it is our responsibility to spend time, energy and money to preserve heritage sites. Dr. Enzo Daimetio gives five reasons why we should preserve them. First, architectural beauty is good for our brain. A relatively new area of neuroscience known as neuroaesthetics posits the theory that beauty in art and design makes us happy. Second, historic, historic buildings are physical links to our past. Yes, it's not just about saving bricks, but about saving the layers and layers of information about our lives and those of our ancestors. Third, historically significant buildings contribute to our city's cultural and economic well-being. Fourth, heritage designations boost property values. Contrary to the conventional wisdom that the designation ties the hands of owners interested in redevelopment, a historical specification sets properties apart. Fifth, heritage preservation is more labor intensive, which means more jobs. With this background, let's look at Keeladi, archaeological ex excavations that emphasize the importance of preserving the archaeological sites in order to know the cultural wealth of the ancient Tamil society. The archaeologists have found many articles, artifacts, and scriptures that belonged to the Sangam period. The scripture, scripts found at Kiladi shows a remarkable similarity with the scripts that were found in Indus civilization. The Indus Valley civilization, which is located in the northwestern part of India, is said to have reside, resided between 5000 BCE and 1500 BCE. The graffiti discovered in Kiladi dates back to 580 BCE and it closely resembles the Indus scripts. So, this creates a link between Indus scripts and Tamil Brahmi. So far, about 1000 different marks have been found and many of the marks are similar to that of Indus scripts. This is one of the examples to show why the heritage sector assumes significance. 
i'm sure the participants will be guided through modules to develop your understanding of the economic and legal principles within which heritage management operates across across the globe from museum displays to site presentations and how heritage shapes national identities i would like to congratulate the department of commerce that has so far produced 54 phd's also the department is the pioneer in the state in introducing various courses and now the department has added yet another feather in its cap by launching acca uk integrated bcom honors program in 2020 my sincere sincere appreciation to dr yafar alexander pravin thurai convener and head department of commerce raven father m bakman coordinator and dr j vinod kumar organizing secretary for taking such initiatives to arrange this program through online platform may god bless all your efforts and may he continue to guide you all all the best thank you father winners are not people who never fail but people who never quit success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out we are extremely thrilled to have with us such an eminent personality our honorable vice chancellor baradasan university trichirapalli tamil nadu dr m selvam i consider it a great honor to introduce our honorable vice chancellor dr m selvam to the gathering at present our honorable vice chancellor has taken position as Uh, the vice chancellor in baradasan university from 5 february 2021 sir is also a member of syndicate in alagappa university mm -hmm. since may 2018 sir has held various administrative and academic positions previously such as senior advisor iqac baradasan university during 2018 and 2019 sir was a professor and head in international business and commerce in alagappa university sir has also served as dean of student affairs dean of research dean of faculty management and iqac director during his tenure in alagappa university our honorable vice chancellor dr m selvan also has a overseas experience as a professor of business administration modern college of business and science muscat during 2004 and 2006 at a national level sir has served as a ugc committee member for autonomous college status evaluation for orissa and tamil nadu and also sir has drafted the report of opinions and comments on new education policy 2015 for submission to mhrd our honorable vice chancellor dr m selvam has guided around 15 phd scholars 57 mphil students and has 45 publications in conference volumes 11 contributions to edited books and published two books sir has also visited several several countries across the globe and has participated and organized more than 150 seminars and conferences sir has also received many awards and fellowships Watu Mal Foundation USA Award for Academic Grade in MCOM, UGC Research Fellowship, Fellow of United Writers of India, Sri P K Das Memorial Award, Best Faculty and Lifetime Achievement Award, and four University Awards. We are excited and honored to have such an eminent personality with us. Now I take immense pleasure to welcome our Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr M Selvam. to deliver the presidential address thank you good morning all of you hope you are all happy i am happy to be yes sir good morning sir you are audible sir okay fine hope you are all uh, happy with this great event at the outset i place my appreciation to the college management the department of commerce of the st joseph college trichirapalli 
for having invited me to be part of this five day FDP program on heritage management sponsored by AICT. This is a great uh, coming together of many institutions and definitely the outcome would be a really great and appreciable one. I must appreciate all my great colleagues in the college, Dr. Alexander Praveen Thray, the head of the Department of Commerce, the Deputy Principal, Dr. V. Alex Ramani, the Vice Principal, Revere Dr. L. John Peter Arlanandam, and uh, colleagues who would join later for delivering the word of thanks, and guests to give the uh, inaugural address, the organizing secretary, students, scholars, and members of staff of this great institution. Good morning once again. This is, uh, Trichy is a heritage city. Everyone knows that. As a heritage city, the religious symbols of all the major religions of this nation, you can find in one place. Just to go to the that uh, temple, you can from the temple you can see on the rest the Holy Cross in the college Saint Joseph College, and bit deep south you can also find the crescent moon tower representing the Islamic tradition. And on the north you can see the great river, the Kaveri. And also you can see that the towers, the imposing towers of the Hindu temples on the other side of the river. That's how the city is fully, fully heritage city with a lot many symbols of sacrosanctness as listed. Also we have so many institutions of repute you have, we have the Bell Barrett Heavy Electricals Limited, BIM Barajasan Institute of Management, Indian Institute of Management, Anna University, of course, Barajasan University is there. Several colleges who have 100 plus years of existence and uh, great service to the society and so on. Thus, the city is fully a heritage city. So in a heritage city, to have a conference on heritage management adds great value and significance. And coming to the institution that is hosting this event is also heritage. It's known for its heritage. It is 177 years plus institution, 1844 to 2021. That is this year, so 177 years. So, so good of this institution. You know, this institution can be depicted uh, by one sentence, A to Z, admiringly benevolent, compassionately divine and trained, facilitative, graciously high intent, justly knowledge learning motivated, niche ordained, perfectly quintessential, reputed service that uplifts virtuously, wise, expressively you exist. This is a sentence of A, B, C, D, up to Z, all the 26 letters used. So such a great institution 
it has its uh, alumni or the gem of this country including the famed our the people's president of this country sri dr abdul kalam ji and so on many great stalwarts scientists technocrats entrepreneurs educationists and what not so that is the greatness of this institution so the institution is full of heritage oriented and finally the topic is heritage the city the institution and the topic all the three put together cit heritage and twined the topic heritage management a business perspective is a deep topic as the head of the department rightly put since this is being organized by the department of commerce the department had gone for a title fashioned around the business perspective that is very good of you that's very fine and uh, i'm sure in the five days of further deliberation discussion a lot more uh, perspectives would emerge enriching the knowledge of all the participants that way once again i congratulate you for your uh, great effort thought provoking effort and uh, staging this program today and uh, to be followed by another four days it is nice of you and coming to certain aspects of uh, heritage you know this subject is connected to everything in any society in any country in any continent or the whole globe put together many hearts brains souls minds and also physical efforts are involved in heritage management the archaeologists anthropologists art collectors curators conservators art dealers historians entrepreneurs solicitors politicians philosophers economists educationists business people tourists the local people and the public at large the whole of humanity are involved in heritage management it is everyone's responsibility because heritage is a collective asset heritage can be defined in so many ways as an inclusive definition heritage includes the attributes cultures and traditions a c t act attributes cultures and traditions that's act as abbreviated of a nation or subnation or meta nation that have existed for a long time and that have great significance for the respective contingent or group the word heritage can give several uh, dimensions it is elastic enigmatic inclusive is rather open ended interchangeable it's so broad so open to a huge range of diverse understanding as well as ununderstanding leading to perhaps disagreement at certain points of time in certain counters common parlance would say that heritage is the collective possession of humanity of the locale or wider area 
could be tangible, intangible, historic, contemporary, individual want, or collectively want. We may classify cla heritage assets in so many ways, perhaps we can think of one like this, the age-old antiquities, art, artifacts, artistic attractions, scenic beauties, natural gifts. And another one, classic or neoclassic cultural, religious, community, or worshipful objects, places, symbols, structures, resources, treasures, that is one way. Another way, the recent past or contemporary creation or discovery, like our community and so many other kind of things that made an ever-growing societal impact of proud ownership by possession, practice, or propagation. Thus, heritage cannot be defined in any precise way because greater things don't confine to a small definition because words limit the scope of anything that is beyond words. Heritage underlies individual commitments and collective action with appreciable legacy, generational transmission, and longing for inheritance. All our heritage properties are our legacy transmitted by generations in the past, and we happily inherit them to be transmission to the future generation. Heritage needs many focuses. There are certain contradictive aspects involved in heritage management in a business perspective. First of all, heritage sites, places, or attractions. So attractions, awareness about the attractions, accessibility to the attractions, accommodation to the visitors for these heritage attractions, amenities for them, aesthetic delights for them, admiration of the heritage sites, places, everything, articulation of the attractions so that the visitors would happily return home with rich experience, exposure, assistance to those people, accountability for the maintenance and utilization of this heritage property, employment generation, earnings, the distribution of earnings across all stakeholders, and thus it goes the business aspects of heritage management. We have to also consider protection and preservation, exposure and exploitation. We cannot leave things to callousness or commercialization. Also, we cannot leave things for vandalism or vanishment because these are rich assets. This cannot be created. This cannot be imitated. These have been handed down from centuries, even millennia ago, either man-made or gift of nature. Recreation is not possible, not liked as well. So we have to put in a lot of zest and zeal when we deal with heritage assets. So in this context, a great role has to be played by 
the residents visitors proprietors of heritage assets proprietors of support accessories state regulators the environmental activists also the heritage assets have lot many features like art and antiquity beauty and bounty culture and creativity diversity and divinity enigma and endurance fabulousness and fineness generosity and greatness homogeneity as well as heterogeneity impulsiveness and impressiveness joyousness and jubilance kindling and knitting together loveliness as well as lavishness magnificence and maneuvers niche and nuances opulence and originality purity and pride quaint and quest rarity and richness skillful and sacrosanct typical and tangible unparalleled and uncommon vivid and visionary wondrous and worthy zenith and zenial youthful and yogi zealous and successful so these adjectives define what heritage assets are so these 52 words definitely cannot describe the depth the width the fineness the breadth of heritage property yet this is a small attempt every nation every sect every community every institution has heritage distinct and dear the art and architectural heritage astrology and astrology and almanac heritage aquaculture and agricultural heritage horticulture and health heritage linguistic and language heritage literature and literacy heritage mathematical and mental make heritage administration and admiration heritage community and communicational heritage work and workmanship heritage behavioral and habitual heritage brotherhood and benevolence heritage historical and societal heritage geo and bio heritage medicinal and dietary heritage in tamil i put mudi and kudi in english the ruler and the ruled heritage the nature and nurture heritage institutional individualist heritage science and technology heritage space and space age heritage truthfulness and tactfulness heritage custom and comfort heritage intellectual and innovative heritage and so on it goes so on it goes we cannot confine with any great effort that we may make to define describe delimit heritage assets the unesco has done a great job in preserving protecting heritage sites across the globe it has identified something like 1154 heritage sites world across of this 897 are cultural heritage sites 218 or natural 39 or mix across the countries i think italy has the maximum number of unesco listed heritage sites 58 followed by france and germany spain with closely around 50 heritage sites india has 40 Russia, USA, UK, Mexico, Iran, Japan have between 25 to 35 heritage 
sites. So these heritage sites are very important for the respective nations, not only really for the respective nations, for every person, for the whole of humanity. The whole world is looking at heritage assets as business assets as well. When we talk about the business perspective of heritage assets, I think we have to think of the tourism industry. The tourism industry, the hospitality industry, have their fortunes built around these heritage properties. That way, international tourism, domestic tourism, regional tourism have all their uh, features, prospects centered around these heritage assets. I think in 2019, the world received something like 1.4 billion tourists, roughly 20% of global population. France, Spain, United States, China, Italy, Turkey, Mexico, Thailand, Germany, and United Kingdom have got maximum number of tourists, something in the range of 84 million to 40 million for this, each for these 10 countries. India comes uh, way down perhaps. We could attract only 18 million tourists in 2019. Of course, we all know that 2020, due to this pandemic, the world international tourism, international tourist arrivals have declined by 75%. That is three fourths of the tourist arrivals of 2019 was completely washed away by this COVID-19. When that washed away the tourist arrivals, many fortunes of people whose lives are interwoven with heritage sites also got wiped off. Many people lost their job. We know that the air industry, the airways, the hoteling industry, tourist guides, and so many uh, kind of things that center around the tourist arrivals lost their fortunes. I think we may have to do a lot more to revive this uh, industry, heritage tourism, and it might take a couple of years, assuming that there is no third wave of COVID, there is no fourth wave, and it is lost once and for all. That's our wish. The earnings from tourism is also pretty good, pretty good for many countries. Of course, China has bagged something like a $250 billion income in 2019, followed by United States $150 billion. The rest of countries with a tourism earnings ranging between 30 and 90 billion dollars each accounted by Germany, United Kingdom, France, Russia, Australia, Canada, South Korea, Italy. India has also made something like 31 billion dollar earnings in 2019. So this is the business aspect. It has very many dimensions. I know pretty well that in the five days you will deliberate on all these aspects in width, in depth with a lot of statistics, experiences and all that. So we all look forward to that happening happily in this greater hall and one way we have to appreciate the COVID as well but for the COVID 21, from 21 states, we could not have brought 
minds, brains, souls to attend this function. So that way, that's a good side of that. So in the bad, we look for the good one as well. So I'm happy to be part of this great function. Uh, whenever I have time, I will log in and listen to the presentation that uh, great people minds are going to make. So I once again, thank you. And I wish the function a great success. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We are so honored to have you for our inaugural session. So thank you, sir, for your definition of A to Z about St. Joseph's College. We are so honored to receive such a delightful definition from you. And thank you, sir, for explaining about the her heritage city of Trichirapalli and about the importance of heritage. And you gave a 360 degree perspective. Thank you so much, sir. We are once again, I would like to thank you and I would like to state that we are so honored to have you for our inaugural session, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I invite our beloved Reverend Father M. Berkmans SJ, FDP coordinator and director Shepherd, the man behind this great initiative. I call upon our beloved father to deliver the oath of thanks for this inaugural session. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, one and all present here in this online platform. I deem it to be a great honor to propose a word of thanks for this inaugural session. Heritage means, as our honorable vice chancellor said, our past. What we are today depends on our past. Our future will also be influenced by our heritage, the past. Preserving and protecting these heritage and heritage sites cannot be done on a service mode alone. It needs sustainability. It needs to be given a business touch. If not for profit, at least for sustainability, it needs a business perspective. With that perspective in mind, this five days of FDP, I'm sure, will be an eye-opener to many of us. The deliberations on this platform in this regard will open new horizons for all of us to manage our heritage institutions and sites. St. Joseph's College, along with the Attal Academy, has taken this initiative. This special heritage status given to SJC in 2015 by the UGC will be an added advantage for SJC to deep dwell in this subject. At the very outset, I would like to thank God the Almighty for this continuous presence in our campus and blessing all our efforts. I thank the management for the rector, principal, secretary for encouraging all of us to apply for this initiative and execute this FDP program. The leaders have shown us the way and we will steadily follow. Thank you, fathers. I thank Dr. M. Selvam, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Bharatidasan University, Trichy, for spending his valuable time with us. He is a man of wisdom. The very first time we met him for this FDP, pro FDP program, the way he accepted and started speaking about the ATL program and SJC put us all in awe. He is a man of search and research. His social nature, I'm sure, will bring many more laurels to the university and the affiliated colleges. Thank you, sir, from our bottom of our heart. Thank you so much. I thank Dr. V. Alex Ramani, the Deputy Principal of St. Joseph's College, for felicitating the program. His presence is our joy. His unassuming nature has made him achieve many things. His commitment for the institution is ever increasing. Thank you, sir, for your words of felicitation. 
I thank Father Arulanandam, the Vice Principal of St. Joseph's College, for being with us today. Believe you can, and you are off the way. This statement suits him better, and he is a man of hope. Thank you, Father, for infusing the same hope in all of us through your felicitation. Dr. Alexander Pravindurai, the FPP convener, head of the Department of Commerce, man spirited with zeal and new initiatives. He is the person who spends his energy and time for the college. The whole program is a brainchild of Dr. Alexander Praveen Turai. Thank you, sir, for being such a resource to our college and to the department. Thank you, sir. Every, every accomplishment starts with a try. This has been well exp experimented with Dr. Vinod, who is making all the arrangements for the success of the program. I thank him in a special way. Thank you, sir. I thank all those people who are involved in the FTP program, namely the MCs, the technical assistants, and all others. May the benevolent Lord be with all of us and bless us always. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Father. Uh, dear participants, with this, uh, we conclude our inaugural session. So kindly wait until the dignitaries uh, leave the session. So dear participants, kindly note with this, we conclude our inaugural session. So immediately, we will be starting with our technical session one. Not with this, we conclude our inaugural session. So, immediately, we will be starting with our technical session one. Yes, uh, dear participants. Uh, Thank you. Now we are proceeding with our technical session one. So before we proceed, I would like to give you a set of instructions. So please stand by uh, for a few instructions. So after technical session one and the ed, uh, at the end of uh, the technical session one, you will be given a YouTube link directing you towards uh, the AICT Comal common inaugural function, which they are conducting in their AACT official YouTube channel. So towards the end of this particular technical session one, uh, the link for that YouTube AICT inaugural function will be posted in the chat box. So dear participants, we are now proceeding with technical session one. Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to introduce our resource person for this session to the gathering. Dr. Arun Rajti is a working superintendent archaeologist in the Archaeological Survey of India, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, and is currently posted at Trichy, which maintains 21 districts and centrally protects monuments of ASI. Dr. Arun Raj has completed his PhD on Arika Medu, a famous early historic Indo-Roman port in east coast of India, and his research received Best Paper Award and Gold Medal in International Conference by SOSSAA in Mumbai. Dr. Arun Raj has served across India, Jammu and Kashmir, Chhattisgarh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka and has undertaken activities to preserve monuments and excavation of buried structures. In the year 2016, Sir has received a national award from the President of India for his contribution towards the differently able people by providing a barrier-free environment 
at Tipu Palace, Bangalore. Dr. Arun Raj is actively participating in giving lectures and motivation talks for university students and has conducted many workshops and seminars on heritage and archaeology. We are so blessed to have such an eminent personality as our resource person for the session Heritage Management and Overview. Now I request our respected resource person, Dr. Arun Raj, to take us forward with the technical session. Over to you, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, friends and my dear seniors, uh, it gives me immense pleasure to take part of uh, this uh, five days FDB, that is a uh, faculty development program organized by the Heritage College, that is St. Joseph College, Tirichrapalli, and the Atal Academy on Heritage Management. I think it's an important topic. So they have chosen a right topic on right time. So, so that is why, first of all, I would like to congrat congratulate the whoever identified this particular topic, heritage management. Uh, in the inaugural session, uh, including the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Bardidasan University and many other personalities, they spoke about uh, heritage and its management in a uh, minimal way. Now, I think in the five, next five days, we are going to talk uh, about this heritage management and its different ramifications. So first of all, I would like to also thank uh, the Reverend Father of this Bharatidarshan, sorry, St. Joseph College Principal, Dr. Aroke Swami sir, and his colleagues as well as uh, Dr. Vinod Kumar, Commerce Department, St. Joseph College, and the authorities of the St. Joseph College for, for providing this opportunity for ASI Tirichi Circle. But the bond between the ASI Tirichi Circle and uh, St. Joseph College is uh, not new, particularly in the promoting the heritage aspect. We are doing, when this office was attached earlier with the Chennai Circle, the parent office, that time itself, we are doing a lot of cultural awareness program in order to promote the heritage of this, this locality. And then interestingly, after the bifurcation and the establishment of new circle in the name of Tirichi Circle, right now it is functioning from the main third gate area of Tirichi. So after the new uh, office, that's from the October 2020. So the bond that they, promoting the heritage bond, it is increased. In the past we have conducted programs, heritage programs. In the continuation only today, again, we are meeting. So I'm once again, I'm thank you to the, thanks to the authorities of the St. Joseph College. With this small introduction, so I would like to go through a PowerPoint presentations, which is all you are seeing. I'm very happy the way they have prepared the program schedule, I should appreciate, because since it is a heritage management, so they have included the, all the other uh, disciplined personalities in this one. Mention must be made of, uh, they have added the heritage, the relation between the heritage management and tourism, tourism sector and finance sector. Also, they have mentioned about the heritage management of uh, museums, again, Heritage means the cultural heritage, not only it's a built heritage, again, it's artifacts also. So we have one lecture of, uh, as interestingly, by the principal only of the museums. And then, uh, uh, and then the, uh, yes, very interestingly, the excavations in the recent archaeological excavation in Tamil Nadu with reference to heritage management. It's very interesting uh, uh, topic. Like that, uh, we can uh, keep on adding uh, many interesting topics. So they have selected, uh, even uh, they have selected the personalities, not only from Tamil Nadu, the other parts of India also. So in this angle, so what I'm going to talk, uh, all my lecture is going to include these things only. That means heritage means, it includes tourism and uh, other management issues. And uh, 
about the artifacts, everything. So what are the topics in the five days, next five days, the other uh, resource persons they are going to discuss, I am going to give you an overview. Yes, with this introduction, we will go to the next one. As uh, the inaugural also, including uh, Vice Honorable Vice Chancellor, many of them defined already what is the exact uh, meaning of heritage. So no, there is no need to tell again what is the, the meaning of heritage to all of you, but heritage is something what you inherited from your forefathers. That means that is the character or anything, the property, anything that is heritage. Yes. So, as uh, mentioned by the other gentleman, it provides clues to our past and how our society has evolved. Many times, uh, the other discipline people may ask, what is the use of the history? What is the use of the study? Is heritage? All these things. You can tell them. So, it's a, it's a, we need the subject of history and heritage aspects on today context. For example, for example, how the heritage or history will be useful for us. Whatever we are seeing today about the calamities, everything, you know, it may be scarcity of water or cyclone, all these things. It all happened in the past also. If we study properly in that particular geographical condition with the help of the historical archaeological facts, we can even do the preventive heritage management uh, for the future generation. That is how that our society here I have mentioned that it provides a clue to our past, which ultimately helps for our future. As we all know very well, these are the major, that means uh, heritage means cultural heritage is the main one. And then the natural heritage. And then the third category we have, I have classified is in, within the ocean, that means uh, marine divisions, we have cultural as well as natural heritage. Then again, when we uh, bring down the uh, major classification of cultural heritage, we have tangible and intangible heritage. As we know, tangible means it's built heritage. Monuments are normally known as tangible evidence, uh, heritage. Intangible means the other rituals and uh, cultural aspects related to the, the main heritage, that is intangibles. Let us see one by one. The same thing, what I have briefed, the tangible the definition and intangible and natural heritage. These are the some examples for the natural heritage. That means built heritage. That means sorry, tangible heritage, built heritage. Intangible, as I mentioned, intangible means anything, rituals, folklore, everything what we are doing today. That means, for example, in a simple sense, if you go to the temple, if you see the temple of Tanjavur Brahadishwara, it is a built heritage. If you attend the puja. If you utter the cultural program, anything which is uh, going around that temple, that is intangible. Again, these are the natural heritage. These are the underwater cultural heritage. Why I have given this Mahabalipuram uh, Shisho temple photo? Because what we are seeing, this uh, Shisho temple is only one. But as per the legends, uh, totally it is, uh, the place is known as seven pakodas, that means seven temples. Six are still in the Ose, only one is existing. So then, who are the custodians of the heritage? Custodians of the heritage means in, in any country, if we go, only two, two divisions only. One is government, another one is the private bodies. So uh, as far as the India is concerned, if you see government means it's a central government that is uh, mainly our organization of the custodian of the heritage. Uh, and then the equally important is state governments. That means archaeology department of state governments as well as the history departments in the universities. Yes. Come to the private bodies that is non-government organizations. Mention is made of organization. I have given just example only. There are many other organizations. Uh, they are also equally important, like the same intact. Yes, here in one more uh, NGO is the REACH Foundations. Like that, as I mentioned, if you go to any region and any district level also, we have NGOs which are doing commendable job on preserving our cultural heritage. Yes. 
So coming to the uh, our organization, the organization of India, uh, no need to mention much as you all are aware of the organization. It is a it is a apex body, apex body for the heritage heritage matters in India. It is an attached office under the Ministry of Culture, which looks after the preservation and conservation of the nationally important monuments. So as of today, we have 3,692 monuments for the better administration. The ASI, it's uh, simply known as ASI. The organization is divided into 37 circles. That means one circle sometimes means more than one state also, or sometimes within the state, many circles we have. Like that in Tamil Nadu, we have two circles. One is in Chennai, another one is the newly established, our office, Tirichi. So totally in India, we have 37 circles. What is the duty of these circles? And uh, apart from circles, we have other branches like uh, I have mentioned in the last paragraph, excavation branches, PhD branch, epigraphy branch, uh, very interesting, important one, epigraphy branch, and uh, horticultural branch, science branch, building survey, temple survey. So it's a very, and then also underwater archaeology link also. So we have a very, very huge force of uh, army, uh, we can say, uh, we have uh, in our organizations. Uh, so within our uh, heritage component, we have two category of uh, uh, monuments. One is the uh, World Heritage Monuments, uh, identified by the UNESCO. Uh, I think our uh, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor briefed about the number of monuments in world context and uh, in Indian context. And uh, within India, how many natural, how many cultural, all these things. The same thing I'm going to repeat. So we have two category of monuments. One is the World Heritage category of monuments. Uh, others are uh, the same, equally important, but we used to know, uh, call us satellite protected monuments or sites. Sites means it's a, it is not a build, uh, you cannot see any any structure form. It is mainly of prehistoric nature or burial grounds. Yes, so I think many of you know that uh, because of the 1972 uh, UNESCO convention only, they have given important to the identifying the uh, important outstanding universal value monuments. Accordingly, only uh, as on today, we have 40 well heritage sites in India, 32 are cultural sites, including the two latest added sites in the last month. One is the Ramapa Temple in Telangana, another one is from Dholavira, Arapan site from the Gujarat. So, adding two sites, we have as of today 32 cultural sites, seven are natural. And one is mixed. Mixed means it has both the cultural and natural elements. So total we have 40 world heritage sites. As rightly pointed out by the Honorable BC, uh, the numbers are very less compared with a small country like Italy and uh, Iran. Uh, we have very less number only. But whether we need uh, really that a uh, world heritage tag. Uh, for Indian heritage, all these things, it's, uh, it's a matter of debate. So this all are just to give you an idea only, I have put these slides. You can see the this little outdated only. So you can see the map and the selected sites, including the natural sites. These all are also list of, you can see the left side, world heritage list. Uh, the right side, you can see the tentative list. Uh, as all we know, first, uh, first it will enter the preliminary stage in the tentative list only automatically it will come from, uh, shifted to tentative to the permanent list, that is a valid heritage list. That is how the two sites, as I mentioned, that Ramapa and Golavira, earlier it was in the tentative list, the, this year only it went to the permanent list. Yes, coming back to the valid heritage sites, in Tamil Nadu, particularly in Southern Tamil Nadu, under Tirchi circle, we have in the name of great living Chola temples, these three, important uh, heritage structures. I think many of you will, must have visited the famous Tanjavur big temple, one of the supposed to be the India's tallest temple. And uh, the the successor, the son of Raja Raja who, who constructed Tanjavur big temple, the son Gangikotavur Chalabro Rajendra Choda. You can see the right side, the top you can see the later period of Chola temple, that means uh, Raja Raja's second of Dharashram. All this Three in the name of Great Living Chola Temples, UNESCO identified as World Heritage Property. 
So as I mentioned, two categories. One is validated property. Another one is other protected monument. Equally important. Uh, these are this. Uh, this I have given an example. You might have seen the Vatta Kote near Kanyagumari, international tourist place, and then the Kodumbalu in Puthukote, and Srivalli Puthur Mahal building, and then the famous uh, the Ajanta of South, that is uh, Chittanavasal uh, cave temples. These are the other protected monuments by ASA Tirchi Circle. We have totally 162 monuments at sites. Uh, this circle is protecting. So, how for the betterment of the heritage management? So, we have uh, different criteria for its management or preservation aspects. For world heritage monuments, we have more reached uh, management plans and conservation plans. Equally, we have other categories also. Like here, I have given A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D categorization. A means it indicates again the world heritage. B indicates the uh, others monument. That means others means something like ideal monuments. We have identified nearly 100 monuments so in India. So they are also we are providing the basic amenities in the, for the visitor and tourism point of view. C is the ticketed monuments. In the, out of uh, 3,600 monuments, we have very less number of ticketed monuments. If you go to Mahabalipuram or any Ajanta, any other place where worship is not there, we are collecting the ticket also. So that comes under the C category. So the monuments not covered in the A, B, C comes under the last, that is D category. Apart from that, for our convenience, we have categorized into the uh, one more category that is known as the most priority and priority monuments and sites. Most priority means if a monument uh, lying in the urban area like Chennai or Kanjipuram, right? So there uh, it's very difficult to do the uh, that uh, preserve that heritage, the surrounding areas particularly. So managing those heritage property, which requires more attention. That is why we are classified into most priority and priority monuments. Yes, the same thing only what I mentioned now, it is again detailed here. So then let us come to the main area. That is, uh, what are the major problems we are facing, Archaeological Survey of India, Central Government Agency, and how we are managing those things in the coming slides, we will we'll analyze. Yes. You can see the, the left side uh, of uh, this uh, presentation, uh, particular slide, you can see that, uh, uh, that Google image, Google Earth image of particular one monument, Gold Gumbas. You can see three different three colors, coloring. One is uh, red color, uh, surrounded by a circle by the yellow color, and uh, circled by the green color. The red color circle is indicating a, that is a protected area. The yellow color is mentioning about the 100 meter from the protected limit. The green area is mentioning 200 meter from the yellow line or from the 300 meter from the red line area. So this type of uh, uh, demarcation uh, in the protected area and prohibited it is called protected, prohibited, and regulated areas. Why this coloring code we have given? In order to preserve that particular heritage. It may be Gold Gumbas, it may be Taj Mahal, it may be Tanjavur Brahadishwara. All are equally important. Heritage is equally important. So we have classified as of today with the help of the Act, I have mentioned in the top, Ancient Monuments AMAs or Act 2008, originally this type of circles, but it's very, very difficult to, difficult, here you can see, it looks nice, these circles, but practically when we go and airmark this area, uh, to uh, to control, to regulate the modern construction, it's practically very difficult questions. Uh, it includes uh, uh, district administration's part also, the law and order part. So what are the problems we are facing? I will again elaborate in the coming slides. The right side you can see the World Heritage site plan of the World Heritage property, Tajavar Big Temple. You can see in the top it's written core zone and puffer zone. Core zone and puffer zone. Yes. Core, core zone and buffer zone. 
here you can see this is the core core area that means the original monument all are here here it is a, the temple is there main temple so whole area is the core zone the another color buffer zone i given this is the buffer zone so in the world heritage property uh, unesco they have identified this type of uh, divisions core zone or core zone for our convenience we have identified this type of circles yes so these all are the important main factor for archaeological survey of india for defining the heritage and its surrounding area yes another important and uh, aspect in the 21st century where we have to concentrate on the management of heritage is that is disaster management as we know india is very prone to that uh, earthquake and other natural calamity zone so in the last few years particularly the last 10 years a lot of natural calamities happening in india including tsunami and earthquake and many more so apart from the modern that structures it's many times heritage structure also they are also very much affected due to this 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 disaster so for to quote an example i have mentioned uh, one this you can see this is one example where we have disaster uh, happened due to the uh, natural calamity that is due to the rain rain water this 1000 year old temple every year in the month of uh, the during the rainy season this is the situation even uh, uh, devotees cannot enter even priest also very difficult to enter to do the perform the puja so when we analyze the the reason uh, behind this uh, water uh, logging so we came to know that uh, because of the surrounding modern structures the last 1000 years uh, the elevation of those structures the temple went to the lower area and then the whatever the outlet channels of uh, these uh, uh, that water outlet channels are blocked actually the water should whatever water collecting inside it should go to the uh external tank which is uh, located uh, next to the temple but in the in between area it's totally blocked due to the uh, modern houses so that is why uh, every year we, we are facing this problem so to come out from this uh, lacuna we are now doing the management issue with the help of local administration also with the help of the uh, technical uh, technology we are with the help of technology also we are uh, consulting recently we conducted a the international workshop on exclusively this topic water logging issues with its special reference to tarashram world heritage property that is how uh, asi also now shifted its uh, the thinking and its uh, the working environment from the past to the the, uh, the present situations we have also shifted our, from the, our conventional way to the, the technological way and then uh, as i mentioned in the beginning uh, the program should include the tourism aspects also so it's a welcome one as yes, uh, tourism industry is the main very growing industry i think next to the oil oil industry i think it is one of the biggest industry, industry around the world where we are getting the revenue uh, through the tourists uh, but uh, again in india the tourism uh, sector is uh, mainly attracted towards cultural heritage as well as the natural heritage and then in the recent years we have other other uh, uh, tourism aspect like medical tourism and much more are there but main in as far as india is concerned uh, uh, heritage tourism so whenever you come to the talk about heritage tourism so heritage is one one uh, one hand and tourism is another hand we cannot uh, leave any one both are equally important but uh, if the from our side if we look uh, which one is uh, we have to give more attention i think we have to give more attention to the heritage because heritage can live without tourism but tourism cannot live without without heritage so that is why whenever that uh, district administration or any local body or uh, anyone are uh, proposing any heritage uh, uh, tourism promotion in the heritage area we should be more careful particularly uh, world heritage properties because uh, well heritage properties are being made, uh, managed by the unesco from uh, europe so we should be more careful what are the criteria and uh, standards they have identified we have to maintain 
Uh, for instance, uh, in the recent past, in the United of all year, uh, in Hampi, uh, they have constructed a bridge adjacent to a well-rated site. Uh, that is why they have, I suppose, they declared as the endangered list. So, uh, so to remove that endangered uh, tag there, uh, so that uh, uh, ASA and local administration, they, they did effort for many years, several years, to bring back to the original status of the world heritage. Uh, even this, uh, what I was showing in the earlier slides, uh, that is uh, water logging at that particular monument, that is also another one. Uh, it's some sort of uh, endangered one only, because in Europe, uh, some of the monuments uh, uh, brought into the list of endangered because of water logging issue in their countries. So these things, uh, while doing, uh, uh, showing that uh, tourism aspects, we should be more careful. We need, as I mentioned, we need uh, tourist uh, amenities for the visitors. Uh, but same time, it should be in a more proper way. As I mentioned, uh, we have already categorization like the prohibited regulated areas. So we have already air marked, air marked. What are the facilities should come within the heritage place? What are the facilities should come yeah, in and around the heritage list, all these six categories, ASA, we have well air marked. Well, the same day, as I mentioned, we have to give the value standard amenities. And then uh, how we are going to achieve these things uh, to the tourist as well as the stakeholder with the help of creating awareness program only. So this is a one, one uh, tourist amenities uh, we have recently provided at uh, Tanjore uh, Big Temple. It's an illumination at the night time. Night time. You can see the, you can appreciate the, the way it looks. Uh, uh, Big Temple Tanjavar, well heritage property. As I mentioned, we need uh, uh, awareness, cultural awareness activities. Uh, so, ASI uh, and the Minister of Culture, it is periodically doing the different uh, awareness uh, activities during different occasions cultural, through cultural programs, wherein we are, we are involved in the children's, mainly school children as well as the college students. That is how, as part of that cultural program only in Tirchi, we are doing with many colleges, particularly the St. Joseph College. Through publications also, we used to popularize our heritage. Then, as I mentioned, uh, ASA is a apex body in India for preserving the heritage. Okay. So like, apart from us, uh, there are other organizations also, like I mentioned, the Intac and other uh, NGOs, they are also doing uh, appreciable job in preserving our heritage and its management. But what about unprotected monuments? Uh, particularly, what is unprotected monuments? That means a monument which is not uh, neither by the uh, government or nor by the private body. So it's uh, neglected. It is in... Uh, uh, it's very in a very bad shape. Those monuments are generally known as unprotected monuments. So, as I mentioned, the ASA is doing good job. State government also doing a good job uh, preserving the heritage. But uh, regarding the, as I mentioned, the unprotected monument, monument only, the name of vandalism, all these things, all the destructions are going on. This is a brief uh, statistical uh, data I have given. Uh, ASA protected monument. 3,692 as of today. Monument sites protected by the state are in each state. For example, in Tamil Nadu, we have 93 sites. Like that, if we keep on add all this uh, state-wise, state government protected monuments, it is totally only 5,000. Only 5,000. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, unprotected monuments are more than 2 lakhs. So who will take care uh, about these monuments? So it's a very big challenge among us. So in the coming slides, I'll show what is the empty condition of the present day unprotected monuments. These are the list I have mentioned, uh, protected by the state, uh, state governments, respective state governments. Uh, you can see two unprotected monuments. Uh, interestingly, these two monuments in the Tirichi region, one is uh, Kailasanada Temple in the uh, Tirpatur area. Tirchi, another one is Kottamangalam near Lalgudi. You can see the looking at the, the photo, you can see the, uh, the importance of this, uh, uh, this art, uh, architectural edifices. Uh, the Kailasanada Temple in the left side, it looks like same by Kanjiburam Kailasanada Temple. Is it so? Yes. Like that, the right side, that brick temple uh, with the Besara, that uh, Vimana, it is also very rare in Tamil Nadu. So, 
these are the examples that these all are uh, these two monuments are right now in uh, with the hrnc department but uh, unfortunately uh, they, they they could not uh, do the proper conservation of these heritages so that is why they now requested us to do conservations of the to the heritages so again earlier i was working in karnataka there the condition of unprotected monuments in remote villages uh, fortunately india is the only one country where if you go to any village any nook and corner of any village or any town you can see somewhere somewhere other form of the heritage aspects so these all are the examples of those heritage aspects you can see this uh, temple sites if we excavate on you will definitely find the old temple complex and then this type of uh, loose sculptures in this surrounding area this inscriptions were being you know it's prone to the uh, vandalism or particularly the theft of the illicit trafficking of cultural property that is why we have to preserve these main heritage complex as well as the sculptures which are and uh, in this in a sculpture that belongs to this heritage only so we have to preserve both if we will not preserve this may in, in any day it may be in uh, may it may be stolen it, it will go to the any european country there uh, after some it is already unfortunately it's going on uh, it went already many and good, good thing is our uh, the present government uh, uh, they are, they have brought uh, many of the looted objects uh, the effort is still going on but uh, still many of the heritages are uh, still lying in the foreign uh, museums uh, yes it's a high time to we have to look into this the preservation of uh, management of these unprotected monuments and sculptures yes again this is interestingly uh, it is our uh, uh, tirchi circle uh, village to village survey this is as part of our, uh, our duty Uh, archaeologist in uh, archaeological survey get duty is preserving the heritage of the existing monuments as well as the identifying the new sites i think many of the uh, personalities during the remarks they mentioned about keeladi and other sites so these all are sites also equally important in tamil nadu this this region uh, equally important uh, these all are identified by my colleague uh, dr atish kumar is here archaeologist so they have identified uh, uh, for example here you can see the and burial of uh, around 2500 to 3000 years back the same another uh, type of burial same period and then you can see the later uh, uh, one uh, inscriptions of 17th century they can see the iron slag uh, belongs to this cultural period and the heritage built heritage the monument so these all are the surveys we used to conduct uh, taluk wise we used to take one taluk and i used to go uh, keep on going village to village and wherever we had come across uh, this type of preliminary evidence we used to document if uh, out of uh, this documented one if we feel more uh, potential want then we will propose for further investigation in the form of extensive exploration or excavations so as i mentioned that uh, we should uh, now uh, provide the our attention uh, give our attention to the that unprotected heritage so why these uh, heritages are not cared because of no clear policy act related to the because the uh, existing act everything is more of uh, the protected monuments uh, it, it speaks very less about the unprotected monuments uh, and also the lack of aware, awareness among people uh, people uh, they, they normally uh, they they do not know about their uh, rich heritage uh they may are aware of the the modern temples uh, or uh, some uh, 100 years old their kul devadas but they are not aware of the some of the 1000 years old temples are lying in their locality and how to preserve it so something uh, with the help of technology we have to uh, uh, introduce a device a method to document uh, these unprotected monuments so that uh, we can at least uh, save them also we, we, have, we can save that those sculptures are uh, abandoned in this locality yes this is another aspect of heritage i would like to uh, emphasize here so we all are talking about the heritage management and preserving the heritage for the posterity for our future generation but future generation the society not only includes people like us also the people like them also what what you are seeing in the photographs 
uh, differently able to people. So you have to think for the betterment of uh, their livelihood also. Uh, so for, for to achieve this goal only, Archaeological Survey of India nowadays introducing this type of uh, uh, barrier-free environment that is providing the tactile pathway, special pathway. Uh, you can see that special pathway here. You might have seen in the airport and railway station, the special pathway, particularly for the differently abled people, that is the uh, blind people, uh, for them. Uh, so here, so we thought of uh, providing these facilities. So also in the providing these uh, brightly signage. You can see touching the monument uh, is not uh, uh, allowed. It is a prohibited. But here, yeah, boy, a uh, blind boy is touching and feeling about the heritage. It is octagonal pillar, all these things. So once he may, he will remember this aspect, so he will never forget about the heritage. That is the uh, this this all of the need of our of uh, you can see. These three girls uh, uh, were visually impaired. They are, uh, when we introduced the systems in uh, Bangalore, Tipu Sultan Palace in the Bangalore city, it received a very, very, uh, very warm uh, response, very huge response, because this, these girls uh, read it like as very fast uh, about the historical information of this building. And then with the help of this uh, tactile pathway, they very easily, they, they walked and reached these heritage places. So these all are the, uh, the we need the coming years in the heritage places. Uh, I think this facility we can give not only in the heritage places, but in our in our office complexes also. Yes. So as I mentioned, the need of our is uh, village to village survey. What we did, what I was showing in one slide, village to village survey. We need in a large scale, and then. Uh, Whatever these uh, sculptures identified through village to village survey or the unprotected monuments, I mentioned two lakhs monuments are there in India. So how to preserve those uh, heritage places, two lakh places? It is not possible government body or uh, any uh, local body can uh, do it. We don't, we don't have that much resource uh, uh, in the name of funding uh, or the human resource we don't have. Then it's a duty of the stakeholders, the local people, as well as the district administration, particularly. That is why in India, but interestingly, we have district level heritage committees in almost all the districts, which is being uh, chaired by the district collectors, DM. So it is a duty of a district collector to conduct a periodical uh, district level heritage committee, wherein they can discuss about uh, the recently identified these uh, sculptures and temples through village to village survey or the unprotected temples are lying in their locality with uh, by uh, by uh, conducting the periodical meeting wherein uh, they can discuss about the available space to shift those loose sculptures which are prone to that uh, vandalism or theft so they can install something like a museum inside a permanent structure so that it will act as a uh, sculpture shed or museum same time uh, the security aspect also uh, it is very much important uh, so for that only we have uh, to document these uh, sculptures, uh, we have a uh, NMMA data, that means National Mission on Monuments and Antiquities format. Uh, with the help of that format, uh, anyone can uh, document uh, uh, the uh, loose sculptures are lying in the area. As I mentioned in the beginning, the participation of the uh, young generation is very important uh, in today's context uh, of uh, preserving the heritage. So that is why we are connecting a lot of uh, activities uh, with the help of these uh, students uh, to promote and preserve our heritage. Also, they do, we have to, uh, we have to uh, popularize or uh, we have to sensitize the local population about to take care of their protected and protected monuments located in their uh, locality. Uh, yes, uh, regarding the cultural awareness program, I already briefed. So coming to the end, uh, it is our duty yeah, that is uh, protecting the protection and safeguarding and management. Uh, even though we are, we are doing, governments are doing, but it, it needs uh, more policies and measures and capacity buildings. Capacity building means what we are doing now, this five days program. This is also, in my view, it's a capacity building measure only. So we have to do universities and colleges, uh, uh, institutions, they have to do more capacity building. They should involve uh, people uh, related in in that particular respective field, they should involve the students also. So uh, uh, that is how we can uh, protect our heritage. 
so that is why i have mentioned uh, the this uh, through the last few slides uh, what are the conservation and preservation problems uh, we, are, we are facing because our problem in the central agency it is different from the others maybe different from the state uh, uh, also the uh, universities because uh, universities and colleges they are teaching about the heritage management i am happy to see in many colleges uh, Nowadays, they have a master degree in heritage management. Yes. So what they are uh, talking in as a theory form, we are doing here in a practical form. So, but there is a much difference between the theory mode and the practical mode. So whenever we are doing a conservation of a particular uh, heritage structures, uh, we should be keep in mind about the various aspects. Uh, uh, that means uh, we have to keep in mind about the, uh, we should know about the original history of that, uh, that monument and also, also the material used for those monuments. Sometimes those materials are uh, not available today. So we have to specially arrange those material, material we have to prepare those material and then we have our own uh, conservation policy are there. So we cannot anything recreate which are missing. So only we can we can restore the heritage uh, wherever uh, requires. This type of uh, lot of uh, complications are there. That is why I mentioned that uh, it is very clear that heritage management and conservation uh, pro that the programs are in, in India are very complex and dynamic. Because in country like India, it's very very difficult. If you go to any region, uh, you can see the different uh, architectural or heritage uh, remains, but which, which are uh, sometimes it is a vernacular architecture. So sometimes you can see the influence of other region also in the architecture. So that material also uh, differs. At some places it is in uh, perishable material like wood. Uh, some places it is uh, material, uh, hard material, stone. But it is again the uh, that stones. Uh, it is more uh, notorious uh, nature like sandstone and others. Uh, you can you, you can see the the status of uh, Shore Temple at uh, Mahabalipuram due to the saline that uh, salt action. Uh, uh, every year we are losing that. Uh, 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 beautiful that images it is getting deteriorated. So we have to do uh, some uh, major attempt to, to preserve the whatever available heritage now. So that is why the heritage management uh, overview in the ASA context it is it's entirely different from the tourism angle, uh, uh, tourism angle or any other aspect. So we are only concerned about heritage, uh, heritage and its preservation. Uh, so that uh, definitely uh, the future generation will come and appreciate the the way we are functioning. So I I uh, request to the all the participants also to keep in uh, mind these aspects uh, when you are, uh, talk about the heritage because here uh, uh, the the inaugural session uh, I think some gentlemen mentioned about the key lady and the Indus Valley all these things. We will not go to the uh, very deep into the. Uh, uh, this type of uh, interpretations because uh, uh, all are equally important in all region heritages. Uh, so here uh, what we need is more scientific interpretations. Uh, if we want to correlate from one region to other regions, we need more scientific uh, uh, connections and scientific analysis. Uh, then only we can uh, correlate with uh, equally important. As I mentioned, Kiladi is important in, in Sangamese context, uh, no doubt. But we have more sites like Kiladi in uh, Tamil Nadu, which needs more attention. Last to many years, many heritage sites are uh, excavated in the last 50 years. So we have to correlate the excavation findings, comparing with those findings, and then we have to formulate a exact date so that uh, we can reconstruct uh, the Tamil Nadu history in a more uh, proper way. That is what uh, I want to add these points. Uh, uh, otherwise, I observed uh, nowadays in Tamil Nadu, particularly, people are uh, stating that uh, more about the heritage. Uh, in, in a very random way uh, about particular dating the site or the uh, uh, mentioning about a particular site. Uh, as I mentioned, we have, to, we have already excavated many sites. We have explored, we have identified, protected many sites. It's high time to preserve those sites. Preserve those sites. Uh, so that is what I want to convey on today, this uh, uh, first lecture. I'm very happy that uh, they have provided the authorities of the St. Joseph College. They have provided the first lecture to, to the ASA Tirchi Circle. So on behalf of the ASA Tirchi Circle, once again, uh, I thank the authorities for providing this opportunity. Uh, so I would like to hear the other uh, resource persons uh, uh, lecture also in the given topic.
so that is why i end uh, my talk on the heritage management and overview uh, with this uh, uh, slides so thank you one and all good morning thank you sir thank you sir for your excellent presentation on heritage management on overview so you have completely covered from the basic starting with why heritage management and about especially about the asis work so we got a very good perspective from an internal perspective about 